Now we've explored the specific type of process which we'd call a set. This process's job may very well be to just set a property, but we can't know that here, and that's not what we're doing. We're supplying an equality test function with one of its arguments. Supplying functions with one of their arguments, or setting a property, are specific types of processes. I don't find this concept to be dissimilar from the concept of subclassing. Do you, out there in TV land, think process is the most generic name for this function class? Because that's what we're currently thinking. We also think that, in spite of that, it's specific enough to describe what we're doing with this array of requested. When a signature can mean multiple things, a generic name may always be better than no name. Swift's use of void when the empty tuple would compile is a demonstration of that. Let's look at the definition of void. See, it's just a type alias for that. A lot of other people, and we, have adopted the convention of using void as the empty return type in closure signatures as opposed to that. I think as long as you're only using it as a return type, it creates a lot more clarity than the empty tuple, and personally, I find it easier to read. Katie, do you have a way to verbalize what kind of similar clarity you think process yields? So with process, we're trying to emphasize the input by de-emphasizing the void output when we're hiding it all together. When you see process in any code but the original type alias, you don't see the return type. You just see the input. Right. 